Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We got a ton of community posts this week. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Laura Graham Brown's got a blog post looking at how you can call store procedures from Power Query. This is actually another blog post in a series that she's been doing. And I wanted to call this out because I get this question a lot about how do I call a store procedure from Power BI? And this blog post walks through exactly how you can do it. The thing I would caution you on is this works for import mode. If you're doing direct query, it's gonna give you an error. It has to do with how the actual execute command is stuffed inside of the T-SQL statement that goes back from a direct query statement. But if you wanna know how to do this from an import perspective, this blog post is really good to just walk through and figure out how to do it. Laura also uses this blog post to look at how you can use functions inside of Power Query as well as parameters to execute the command that you need to execute. Definitely a great blog post. If you're looking to understand how to call store procedures from within Power BI or Power Query, check out this blog post, links down below. Reza Rad's got a blog post looking at how you can calculate duration, so days, hour, minutes, seconds from within DAX. This is an interesting approach if you're actually looking to calculate it based off of your actual dates that you have. So maybe you don't have hours, minutes, and seconds from a data perspective in your actual data. And so this is a way you can calculate those items from a DAX perspective to get those values that you need. Reza also calls out why you wouldn't do this from a Power Query perspective, and he talks about the pros and the cons of doing that approach, so that is something to consider as well. This isn't overly complicated, but it's always nice to see someone actually walk through this because you may not know, and knowing's half the battle. Links as always down in the description below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. Phil Seamark's got a blog post looking at row-based time intelligence. And if you want a blog post that will kind of melt your brain a little bit, this is a good one. So if you have a scenario where you're looking to slice by period, so like, you know, last 28 days, last three months, something of that nature, and you don't necessarily want to calculate that from a measure perspective, this is an approach you can take to actually use another table to house those segments. And Phil walks through how to actually set this up. He also gives you the scripts for this from a T-SQL perspective and the DAX perspective. It's an interesting approach, and he definitely calls out the pros and the cons to doing this. He had some time-based duration information based on going the measure approach versus the row-based approach. And the row-based was a little faster. He also looks at how you can do this from either a bi-directional perspective or a many-to-many -many perspective to see what that's doing as well. It's not for everyone, but this may actually help you out if you have a scenario where this may be useful for you. Chris Webb's got a blog post looking at case sensitivity inside of Power BI, or rather the lack thereof. The Power BI engine itself under the hoods is case insensitive and it can result in things that when they visually look different, the engine actually treats them the same. Chris goes through a bunch of examples that illustrate this behavior from a Power BI perspective and a DAX perspective and then gives you an option that could help you work around it. If you're from an analysis services background, you may be thinking, well, the tabular engine has an option where I can toggle that, but that's not available from a Power BI perspective. Chris gives you another option that you could use, but just know that it can get a little wonky if you don't remember that you're handling it this specific way, and you have to account for that when you're doing your DAX measures. Spoilers, Unicode comes into the picture. Anyway, this is an interesting blog post if you're curious about case insensitivity versus case sensitivity and you're struggling with that from a Power BI perspective. Check out this blog post, Chris has got you covered. There's a blog post on the Power BI blog that looks at just an overview of what Power BI can do for you alongside of Azure Analytics. It's a powerful combination. There's a lot of tools that are available to you to conquer your data challenges. It's a quick read and there's a link to a video that helps walk you through what your options are. If you're new to Power BI and or the data analytics space and not quite sure what your options are, definitely check out this blog post and the associated video. It's a good read and just a great way to get started in understanding the landscape. Again, links down below. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. 
I want to know, let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.